بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم یور ایکسلنسیز ڈسٹنگوش گریسٹ لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین اٹس اے ڈیپ آنر اینڈ اے گریٹ پریولیج ٹو بی ہیئر ایٹ دس گیدرنگ اگین ود آر ڈی پیٹرو ٹوینٹی ایٹین دس از این امیزنگ کانفرنس این امیزنگ سمٹ اینڈ وی آر گیدرڈ ہیئر ٹو ڈے ٹو سیلیبریٹ انوویشن ٹو سیلیبریٹ ریسرچ اینڈ ڈیولپمنٹ to actually bring ideas and investments together. Today is about actually execution and implementation. We talk a lot about the future, but today is a lot about optimization, brilliance in terms of performance, the quality that is being produced. We are living in amazing, amazing times. Uh, it's unprecedented what's going on around us. And even though the oil price is not at its amazing, heady best, there's just so much opportunity around us because of technology, because of information, because of artificial intelligence and so on, a lot of which we will discuss in great depth today. We're extremely fortunate to have some of the most amazing minds uh, in the industry. They're here from all over the world and they've come specifically and specially to honor you and share their ideas and thoughts with you. So to get us moving and get us uh, into this, this wonderful day and two days ahead of us, please put your hands together and we'd like to welcome Mr. Qasem Al Qayyumi, the chairman of RD Petro and ADNOC Technical Youth Center Unit Manager. Please, Mr. Qasem. Assalamu alaikum. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It gives me a great honor to welcome you to R&D Petro 2018, the International Research and Development Petroleum Conference and Exhibition. Under the name of ADRAC, we started this uh, forum uh, six years ago as a small gathering of industry innovator to discuss R&D topics. Year after year, the interest and engagement of professionals from academia to industry continue to grow. In the last uh, edition in 2015, Mr. Yasser uh, al mazrui uh, as a chairman, made the event an international one and laid the foundation of it to become the largest international oil and gas conference and exhibition entirely and solely focused on R&D. Today, with R&D Petro, we have broadened our reach and objectives further while remaining focused on new ideas and solutions to specific challenges we have set. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I chair this year's edition. I am delighted to welcome R&D Petro, not just establish an emerging oil and gas company, but also innovators from other industries, as well as technology leaders, startups, and universities. Over the next two days, we will hear from and engage with more than 100 international speakers, chief technologists from pioneering companies and specialists from both downstream and upstream sectors. Equally, we will see a robust program of technical presentations coordinated by the leading oil and gas technical societies. We have our very special guest, uh, Mr. Abdulaziz Abdullah Al Hajri, he is the downstream director, ADNOC, to make uh, some opening remarks and get the show on the road for us. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to be here with you today and to see so many familiar faces and not so familiar faces here. I was just chatting with one uh, uh, colleague who has transferred from. Uh, onshore to offshore, and he was telling me, you know, the, how the sea is so calming and help you think. So I 
came to my uh, memory, and uh, I do not know whether you have seen it or not, uh, an old TV show, and there is a several version of it. Sailors at sea, they called on the radio. They were having trouble. So they were uh, calling Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. We are sinking. And then the reply came to them on the radio. Uh, Tell us what you are thinking about. So sinking and thinking could be confused, but uh, I think we need to think if we do not want to sink. This unique forum will address specific global and gas technology challenges and focus on innovative R&D solutions that will enable us to maximize the value of our oil and gas resources. It aims to foster closer collaboration between leading oil and gas companies and the brightest global innovators. Importantly, this platform will help incubate the best and most promising ideas and accelerate their development, commercialization, and deployment. Ladies and gentlemen, RD Petro takes place against the backdrop of global economic growth and rising demand for energy, refined products, and petrochemical products. This is creating new opportunities across the hydrocarbon value chain. Furthermore, the speed of technology development has never been faster and its potential impact as powerful. Moving on, we have uh, our keynote speaker for today. Uh, his name is Dan Cobley. He is from Google, ex-Google. He is a fintech investor. And he joined Google when Google was a mere little puppy. And, uh, and his marketing department was all about sort of t-shirts and, and little, uh, little things like that. And he helped to grow that. Please put your hands together for Dan Cobley. Today, I'm going to talk to you about innovation, about why it's so critical, and how we can learn some of the lessons from companies like Google and the amazing fast growth startups that I'm working with today. And when I say innovation, what I'm talking about is the creation of more effective products, processes, and technologies that create value for our customers and therefore for our organizations. And the reason that's so important is because we want to drive business success. And success for our businesses or the businesses that we're dreaming about building in the future comes from meeting the needs of our customers better than your competition. And the needs of our customers are changing faster today than at any time in previous human history. And your competition is moving and changing faster today than at any time in previous industrial history. And as a result, we have to innovate to move to keep up. We start with our CTO summit. Uh, as we, we have six amazing people here, uh, from heads of strategy to heads of product development for global corporations. Uh, incredible bunch of people, and uh, we'll certainly uh, enjoy engaging with them. This segment is about bringing about disruption, bringing about transformation uh, through digitalization, artificial intelligence, and technology. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite you with, uh, f to uh, welcome uh, Austin Harland. He is from uh, IBM. He is their chief technology officer, and he is the innovator's innovator, and he's going to give us a few remarks and then to get the show on the road. So with the advent uh, of a number of game-changing digital technologies comes a number of opportunities, unfortunately, not without challenges. 
AI and analytics are becoming part of the standard package for most vendors in this space. One is almost taking this as, as a granted. Blockchain is also being pr prototyped in many use cases that are spanning both the IT and the OT domain. Thus, maintaining efficiency, audit trail capability, and high safety integrity levels. Why cognitive technology adoption is essential? There's a lot of companies talking about cognition. And uh, for us, we believe, you know, there's a lot of insight to be surfaced from unstructured information. Hid, you know, hidden in complex documents with multi-column text, tables, images, even the images may have text as well. So in order to, to re, re, you know, take out all that information, you could potentially see a big reduction in time it takes to find the information, but also to increase your workforce productivity level. And the business outcome should be 5 to 15 percent increase in, uh, in productivity and efficiency gave, gain, and also cost reductions in the same area. Professor Rose, uh, you're the chief strategist at uh, Adnoc. We've heard about cognition, we've heard about uh, uh, the business of things and some wonderful questions that Austin has put on the table there. How are you adopting that strategy within Adnoc and how, how is that rolling out? I think one of the first things to realize is that the oil and gas industry historically has always been an industry with large amounts of information. We're a big data industry. Uh, we find the oil in order to do that. We collect lots of data, geophysical data. So we have huge quantities of data in our industry. Right. And the key for us in Adnoc to actually go with the digitalization and the advanced data analysis is to extract value out of this data, right. the data we have. And these new technologies allow us a new window on, this, uh, on, this, uh, on, the, on, the, on the things we do. Now, for me, there are two things uh, it actually does for us. The, the easy one is the quick wins. We do the things we do uh, at the moment faster and cheaper. And there are uh, tools that allow us to do this and analyzing the data. But the more important thing is uh, it actually prompts us to do things differently. It's a culture change. How do we th do things differently? Uh, because we see patterns in the data that actually give us the lead of changing the ways we do our operations of changing the ways we actually think about the business. And that's where the, 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 the big value element comes into, uh, into play. And for all of those things, we've set up teams in Outnoc mm -hmm. who will actually start to look at it yeah. in, in, in the upstream as well as in corporate. Yeah. Manas, uh, culture change is one of the most difficult things to do. Uh, you are MD at Accenture. How do you future-proof uh, oil companies, oil and gas companies? You have culture change, you have technology change and development. You, how do you bring that together? How do you bridge it? Yeah, if you, uh, Tarek, if you think about uh, the three fundamental remits um, of, of uh, any oil and gas company, uh, it, it is you know, reducing cost of supply. Uh, it's about uh, reducing the latency in the system. You can think about it from, uh, as time from FID to first oil. And uh, lastly, maximizing net back uh, or revenues uh, for the company. Now, if a company is to exist uh, in, in the medium to longer term, they have to deliver on these three things. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, use of digitalization, uh, if it is uh, used, if it is leveraged in achieving these three things uh, in, in the short to medium term, but then also help in the longer term to transition from oil to gas to electricity and then to energy as a service, then it becomes a powerful metaphor to engage your uh, employers, uh, or, or sorry, employees, mm -hmm. and, and uh, energize them about the change. Thank you. The, the oil industry, you know, uh, tends to work in a sort of boom and bust cycle uh, regularly. Um, and uh, in the good days, five, ten years ago, when the oil price was well above 100, you know, was there a sense of complacency sort of clicking in and, and adoption of digital wasn't that fast? Uh, but over the last two or three years, it's accelerated. What are your thoughts, what are your observations as a head of product at Baker Hughes? You must be now accelerating your, your engagement. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think the dynamic that you've seen over the past few years was that when you had very high oil prices, um, 
And I think some of the progress in technology that you know, Dan described earlier hadn't quite matured to this extent. I, I think there was a sense of complacency. But after the, um, you know, the recent drop in oil prices, and even though there's a little bit of a recovery now, the key thing now is how do you get operational efficiency up, yeah. right? And I think there's tremendous excitement in terms of the technology that's now available, the possibility. But very, very often we get into this mode about what could happen in five years or 10 years. Uh, the question, though, is how, what do you do now? And that's where you know, we see that as, as something that uh, I think companies, uh, as our customers, and uh, we as, as Baker Hughes GE need to invest a great deal in. Philippe, getting you into uh, the equation, you are the, the little guy here in all these big boys. Yep. <laughs> and you run a 200 people company, uh, you have a VP Solutions for that, for Spark Cognition. What is, in your view, when you put your lens on with your experience, the number one critical issue that you feel uh, the risk and the challenge in front of you? So we are moving into um, the digital age. And for those of us who don't know who we are, we are Spark Cognition, a small startup. Four years ago, we were in, in the innovation booth in the back, not at this conference, but we have been very lucky to come up with a technology that that is disrupting a very hot market with artificial intelligence. Um, everybody on this panel is actually a partner or a client, and many more of you in the rooms um, are partner or client, and we thank you for that. <clears throat> the, you know, as we look at, at uh, the data and the information you have to, uh, to work with, the first thing you have to do is to secure it. I mean, unless you apply a very strong cyber security approach to your artificial intelligence strategy, you are going to be at risk of, of uh, failing very quickly uh, if you don't protect what is becoming the most valuable asset in your company, which is the data. That gives us a nice little segue into uh, Vincent. Uh, you've got all this data, you've got change, you've got products, you've got large oil companies working on that. How do you, as Total, a, a major uh, player in the world, how do you actually bring it into the organization? How do you digitize an environment? It's easy to say and throw these little platitudes like, oh, we need to digitize. But what does it actually mean? Yeah, um, I'm going to start by a quote that I use with my researcher. And my quote is, uh, research is about going down dark alleys to see if they lead anywhere. So I'm going to take you down a dark alley okay. uh, to answer your question. It's a convoluted way of doing things. I'll apologize in advance. Um, digital comes from the word digit, means finger in Latin. Mm -hmm. And then it was transformed into digits, so numbers from 1 to 10 to count, maybe because you counted on your fingers. And then it went into binary because computers are based on two digits, 0 and 1, 1 and 2, how you, how you want it. So what are digits? Going back to close the loop, and I'll tell you then how we see digitization and digital in total. Digital is about tools. We were given opposing fingers, and we evolved because we made tools. And digital revolution is more of a digital transition. It's about designing tools. So our approach is that digital is just that. They're tools. They're additional tools to our quiver. They're more powerful tools because they're made of three components that are coming to confluence right now access to data, and I agree with my colleagues, there's a lot of data. We have one of the largest computers in the world. Geoscience data and processing geoscience data takes 95% of the computer time. Uh, fast access to computers and, and more powerful computers uh, and, um, and uh, more powerful algorithms. I'm Saeed Zahrain, the CEO and founder of Barack Aerospace. We have a startup based on Purdue University, and we are specialized in UAV or drones. And we had a hard time trying to convince oil and gas companies here in the Middle East to work with us. We use artificial intelligence, we, we use machine learning, machine vision for our, for our UAVs to navigate around the oil facilities. And we tried to target Saudi Aramco, but I think the regulations are like just killing us. Can you please tell us more about the future of using drones uh, in oil and gas industry? So I, I can relate to, to what you're saying. I invite you to come talk to me on the, on the stand uh, and, and talk to Pierre-Olivier Lys, who's somewhere here today, about the difficulties he encountered to sell using drones in total for the seismic work. Um, 
you're talking about management of change, you're talking about not invented in my backyard, you're talking about risk adverse populations and the only thing I can tell you just don't let go of the calves that you're, you're, you're biting. I mean that's, that's what it will take to push a good idea and to generalize it. Our region is not very good at managing failure or even the word failure. It doesn't actually, it's not a learning experience. In Silicon Valley you need to have failed to have actually qualified. You need a failure CV, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts, any comments, please? Uh, so, um, uh, first of all, thanks for mentioning Purdue, my alma mater. <laughs> so, okay. we're very happy to hear that. But, uh, you know, uh, for both questions, uh, I would say, you know, if we take a top-down approach, instead of saying, here's a tool that could help the industry, yeah. if we take uh, the other approach, uh, you know, going back to Professor Rose's point, you know, trillions of dollars are being spent in this industry. If you first quantify the value that your tool or service can create for this industry, and then, uh, you know, uh, take a step down and say, you know, here are the business models you need, and here are the capabilities that I provide, I enable, then you would have more success uh, in attracting talent as well. It's uh, Argad Arnaud from Pronova. We work actually in the domain of uh, drilling data analytics and applying um, AI long time ago. But uh, always the big challenge for us is the data quality. Uh, now we are speaking about digitalization and the next phase. What about the data quality we already have? We already collect it. It's absolutely correct. We have actually used machine learning to clean up, for example, databases, 10-year-old databases. And we used AI and machine learning to actually clean it up so we have a clean data set. And we actually are very much aware of that. And there are special uh, initiatives being launched which look into quality data, quality data management, what do we need to do to bring our databases up to scratch so we can actually make use of these new technologies and uh, that's a prerequisite for actually applying some of these new technologies. Uh, intelligence is very simple. Uh, if you have poor data, you will get poor results. It's very important to improve the quality of the data that you are collecting in order to get outstanding value uh, out of your data. It, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out. If your data is poor, you'll get poor results from AI. We got fantastic technology to clean up the data, to try to recalibrate it, to try to make it usable. But, you know, it's much easier to solve the problem at the root and make sure that the data you acquire is of top quality. So, just a quick question. How applicable is the blockchain in the oil and gas industry? It is currently dominating all other industries. And especially for Austin, I've come across uh, IBM Hyperledger from the different uh, versions of it. So, how can we implement this within Adenoc itself, or oil and gas industry? Brilliant, brilliant question. Uh, Austin, quick comment on that. There are different uh, aspects to consider when you go into some of these countries due to legislation and data privacy. So uh, uh, I can only talk for myself. We are working on a, on a private solution where you can actually deploy this and, and uh, kind of de instantiate solutions in your own, uh, inside your own enterprise. The first question about uh, you know, use cases. Uh, we, ha we have roughly uh, cuffed up uh, like 30 plus use cases that are spanning, uh, I would say, production and operational uh, issues. Uh, for instance, being able to, uh, to, from a central position, work with the laboratory systems out in the field and cross the IT OT boundary uh, and, and do that in a high integrity level. So not uh, distorting, deteriorating the safety integrity levels and also kind of prove that you have a you have a track record, you have a node trail. Hi, I'm Amin Arya from University of Maryland, USA. Uh, today I heard a lot of good words about big data and data analytics and machine learning, but the question in here is uh, why, for example, our team, which, which is working on corrosion on pipelines, why we cannot get access to any type of data, especially big data? For the purposes of research, you know, creating good public data sets is absolutely key. You see some of that, I and mean, certainly in the U.S. data, you see that from Norway as well. But I think there's tremendous uh, benefit to be gained by everyone by making certain types of data uh, public and available for, uh, for analysis. Wonderful analogies. Big hand to the whole team.